As we learned more about antibodies and how to use them therapeutically, it became clear that this was another rich field of research. Antibody discovery is essential for advancing precision medicine by enabling the development of targeted, personalized therapies with enhanced efficacy, safety, and specificity. We're learning how we can use antibody technologies to accomplish all of those goals of precision medicine. And it's really unlocking new capabilities and new approaches to medicine that have not been accessible before. Antibodies have become a core component of precision medicine and are used in numerous therapeutic applications. In this segment of our documentary, we'll cover the tools responsible for antibody discovery. But first, what are antibodies and why are they so important for the field? Antibodies are Y-shaped proteins that are part of the immune system and they're responsible for defending against foreign invaders and distinguishing between our bodies and other things from the outside that might infect us or that might cause disease. Antibodies work by binding to targets on the surface of cells. That's how they recognize their target. That's how they clear their target. It's all cell surface recognition. The sections at the top of antibodies are called fab fragments. They are responsible for binding their targets, while the bottom portion, called the FC region, interacts with other proteins to activate immune responses. So you can either have an antibody bind to its target and try to deplete the target, immunodepleting antibodies, or you can have an antibody bind to its target and just block its interaction with its natural ligand. Over the years, scientists have found innovative ways to utilize antibodies' strong binding capabilities for various applications in precision medicine. After the discovery of a protein marker or target protein, antibodies are used throughout the entire therapeutic development workflow. This includes its role as the main component of a therapeutic drug and for diagnostic purposes. We're learning how can we use antibodies to target many different areas or many different types of the body, how to have many different functions such as uh, protein degradation or receptor activation or entry into privileged tissue sites like the brain. But before antibodies can be used therapeutically, researchers must identify those with the necessary properties through discovery technologies. Antibody discovery technologies are specialized to find those specific antibodies against a particular target or particular disease from many, many possible variants. The complexity of targets, especially membrane protein targets, protein complexes, and mutations, variants, or post-translational modifications unique to the patient requires the discovery of highly specific antibodies with desired properties, such as sensitivity, affinity, stability, as well as antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. The process of antibody discovery is a technology that's been refined over the last 40 years or so, where we actually find specific antibody molecules and then we turn them into drugs or we turn them into other types of diagnostics or other proteins that are useful for biotechnology. Antibody discovery also facilitates the identification of novel biomarkers associated with specific diseases or patient subpopulations, enabling early detection, prognosis assessment, and treatment monitoring. So how do researchers find the right antibodies needed for precision medicine? There's lots of ways to discover an antibody. There's many technologies that have developed over the last few decades. And uh, they all have one thing in common, which is essentially sifting through a large or sometimes a very large number of proteins to find just the one that you're looking for. So monoclonal antibodies were traditionally made by hybridoma technologies. And in the late 1980s, beginning the 1990s, recombinant DNA technologies came into being. And that let us really develop very powerful tools to be able to take the technology of monoclonal antibodies to another level. 
In particular, display technologies like phage display and yeast display came about. Display technologies have greatly improved the antibody discovery process by allowing researchers to screen many antibodies and identify the ones that bind specific targets of interest. This process involves using organisms like phages, bacteria, or yeast cells, which are engineered with unique DNA fragments that they express as proteins. A functional screen is then used to find cells with desired properties, such as binding to antigens from HIV or SARS-CoV-2. Finally, DNA sequencing is employed to analyze the selected libraries and precisely identify the antibodies of interest. And we learned over the years that the bigger the libraries, the more chances you were to find therapeutic candidates. Using this technology, Dr. Morasco was able to build a groundbreaking 27 billion member human antibody phage display library by combining antibody genes from 57 donors. When you combine those antibody genes from different people, you can mix them up. But by randomly recombining heavy chains and light chains, we created specificities that did not exist in nature. These novel combinations have led to the discovery of important antibodies used against deadly viruses like SARS, MERS, and HIV. That's how powerful the technology is. And once we realized how to use it and became really good at it, it became the source of many different therapeutic antibodies and research tools. But now, newer technologies like single B cell cloning are pushing these advances even further. That technology of single B cell cloning came out so that you could take an individual after their COVID vaccine or after flu, isolate some B cells and actually pull out and make monoclonal antibodies that the patient was actually secreting in their blood. Using advanced antibody discovery technologies, they find exactly those molecules that are responsible for that incredible advantage that this particular individual might have against a, a particular virus or a particular disease. Once potential antibody candidates are identified, researchers rely on numerous antibody characterization techniques to assess their properties and ensure they are suitable for therapeutic or diagnostic use. Proteins that reflect native folding and structure are critical for successful immunization, lead screening, antibody binding, and bioactivity validation. However, quite a few targets, like membrane protein targets, are very complicated in structure and difficult to produce and maintain its native conformation. Various techniques, such as binding assays, epitope mapping, and functional testing, are used to confirm that the antibody interacts with its specific target retains its activity under physiological conditions and has the right affinity for its intended applications. We've also been expanding into very high throughput functional screening platforms beyond just binding affinity. So looking at things like virus neutralization or the ability to block infection in vitro, it's maybe the most important function of an antibody for a lot of antiviral applications but it's very difficult to screen for. And so we've been extending these high throughput screening platforms to those kinds of new functional tests that were not possible using the previous iteration of display technologies. The antibodies discovered through these advanced methods are then applied in important therapeutic areas like cancer treatment. As we know, immune therapy has revolutionized the cancer treatment by harnessing the body's immune system to target the cancer cells in immunotherapy, antibodies are key to restoring T cell function and suppressing tumors. T cells are a fascinating area of rapid growth in modern medicine. Antibodies target extracellular targets. So they target things generally outside of cells, um, foreign viruses or foreign proteins or something that's on the cell surface. In contrast, T cells survey the activity from inside cells. Based on that ability, T cells can attack cancer cells. Tumors, however, exploit an important pathway known as PD-1, PD-L1 to exhaust or suppress T cell activity. PD-1 is a molecule that is upregulated on a T cell. It's a molecule associated with exhaustion. They know there's a tumor there, but they can't kill it because they're exhausted. Whereas the tumor cell expresses the other pair of that, PDL1. So if a tumor cell expresses PDL1, 
it binds the PD-1 on the T cell. It essentially causes that T cell to become exhausted and shut down. Antibodies can disrupt this interaction by binding to PD-1, which reactivates T cells and enhances their cancer-fighting ability. In addition to cancer therapeutics, antibodies are also used to neutralize infectious diseases. Viruses like HIV or pathogens like malaria have been evolving for many, many, many years to evade our immune systems. And over that time that they've been selected for being able to continually infect and go from one human to another, those pathogens have learned tricks to avoid our immune system. To combat these pathogens, researchers must identify antibodies with strong protective properties. These rare antibodies typically arise only in specific individuals or after multiple encounters with the pathogen. Scientists frequently need to analyze millions of antibodies to find one that can target a pathogen's weak points. And if we can find those and understand how they structurally recognize and, and neutralize the pathogen, we can turn them into drugs. We can turn them into vaccines. We can turn them into antibody drugs. And we're actually seeing a lot of progress in these kinds of very, very potent, very protective antibodies being used as therapeutics. Antibodies used against viruses are especially powerful when they are able to neutralize many different variants and even different species. Many years ago, I worked in West Nile virus. We developed an antibody that surprisingly was directed against the E protein. It surprisingly was able to neutralize all mosquito-borne flaviviruses. This antibody was versatile enough to neutralize a range of viruses like dengue, Zika, West Nile virus, and more. And um, those viruses don't mutate like the other viruses do. So there's potentially long health life. So we've developed one that was originally developed against West Nile virus. It's in phase two clinical trials for the treatment of dengue disease. And that data looks pretty good. These applications demonstrate just a few of the important therapeutic uses of antibodies. Over the years, development in antibody engineering have further expanded the use and efficacy of antibodies in precision medicine. This has led to the production of antibodies with multiple binding domains and antibody drug conjugates, known as ADCs, that link antibody to cytotoxic drugs to fight cancer. Recent advances in ADCs and bispecific antibody drugs further leverage the power of antibody therapies with conventional small molecule drugs and have demonstrated more effective treatment options on solid tumors. In this day and age, uh, bispecific antibodies are now, you know, the, I would say the next big breakthrough in the field. Some of them are approved already. Many are in the pipeline. This is where you combine two specificities, like one against the T cell and one against the tumor target. And they're called bites, actually. This type of bispecific antibody is used to bring T cells and tumor cells into close proximity by binding to both and improving the T cell's ability to kill the tumor cells. That's just another example. But you can now do engineering at every step in the process of the binding site, of the valency, of the effector functions, it's become a pretty sophisticated field. Similar to bispecific antibodies, other recent advances have focused on multi-specific antibodies. Since the late 1990s, there's been a rapid growth in what we call multi-specifics, which is different antibody binding domains as part of the same molecule. And the scope of functions that can be done by multi-specifics is almost unbelievable. Multi-specific antibodies combine multiple binding domains in one molecule and enable targeting multiple proteins with distinct functions. These antibodies can be configured in various ways and have progressed from the simple Y-shaped molecules with two binding arms to more complex designs with distinct functionalities on each arm. Recently, multi-specifics have expanded even more. Now we're adding more binding arms on top of each. There can be, instead of a Y, you could think of an X where there's binding molecules on all four corners. 
These diverse configurations have consistently demonstrated effectiveness in new contexts and are enabling innovative ways to interact with complex biological systems. When we can bind to any protein on the cell surface and maybe find ways to bind to the proteins inside the cell, the number of possibilities are just tremendous for how we can target different cells within different body tissues to accomplish a, a given drug or treatment. Another important advancement is the rise in artificial intelligence and machine learning. These tools are improving many areas of science, and antibody discovery is no exception. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are going to revolutionize the way we approach the world because a single person can only analyze and synthesize and understand so much from a data perspective. Like everything else, you know, if you have a big enough data set, you can really use machine learning to try to improve the accuracy, the percentage of hits that you get, the number of targets that are really therapeutic real therapeutic candidates. AI tools like Google's AlphaFold allow scientists to understand how proteins fold and interact with other proteins, which is very important for antibody design. And you can use artificial intelligence to get your candidates or increase the range of your candidates without having to make every mutant that you think might be important. You can use AI to tell you which are the top candidates or predicted to be the top candidates. And then you can use modeling to model those even further. Despite these advancements, there are still some hurdles the field must overcome before we can fully leverage the potential of AI and machine learning. The catch is that we don't have the data yet. And so we need a lot more data and we need it to be annotated in much, much better ways in order to use the power of these incredible artificial intelligence and machine learning models to accomplish really rigorous and uh, really effective drug discovery. And so bringing AIML to reality is uh, kind of a joint experimental and computational problem. And uh, based on where the field is heading, I know that we're up to the task over these next several years. With the remarkable progress in antibody discovery technologies and the growing application of therapeutic antibodies, the future holds immense potential. The future is incredibly bright for antibody drugs and antibody-based molecules heading into the clinic. We have so many different approaches now, uh, things like multi-specifics and high throughput functional screens, and uh, we've got ways to keep an antibody drug in the body for over a year, potentially. And it just, it really expands the number of possibilities. By harnessing the power of antibodies, researchers can personalize the treatment landscape, such as the patient stratification for more targeted enrollment in clinical trials, better prediction of treatment outcomes, and optimization of treatment strategies for specific patient populations. Future efforts will also focus on expanding antibody engineering strategies for the development of novel therapeutics. So I'm working on a project on fentanyl overdose right now. And antibodies have a long half-life. And um, there's ways to administer them. There's ways to get them across the blood-brain barrier so they go into the central nervous system. That's more engineering that can be added to these antibodies. So there's a lot to do and a lot of targets there. And I'm exciting to be part of the field. There's a lot on the horizon, and my lab is very excited about taking the current technologies that we have and branching out into new problems and new capabilities, always built on the fundamental underlying biology of what we know. Antibodies continue to drive many of the therapeutics used in precision medicine, thanks to breakthroughs in discovery technologies. With exciting advances in AI, engineering antibodies, and multi-specifics, the potential for antibody-based treatments will continue to grow and offer new solutions for personalized healthcare. Stay tuned for our next segment of the documentary, where we cover the importance of organoids in precision medicine. <laughs>